Um, good morning and welcome to this Cabinet Member for Housing and Asset Management Decision Day taking place from the Waltham Suite, Winchester Guildhall. The time is 9.30 a.m. My name is Councillor Kelsey Learning, Cabinet Member for Housing and Asset Management. Please can I advise that the open parts of today are being audio recorded and live streamed from the Council's website. In addition, a video recording will be uploaded to the Council's YouTube channel. Please can I remind any officers joining virtually to turn off their cameras and mute their microphones until invited to speak. Please can I also remind members to speak clearly and remember to use your microphone. Finally, please can I ask everyone to ensure that mobile phones and other electronic devices are on silent or switched off entirely. The First item of today's agenda is disclosure of interests. Um, does anyone in the room have any disclosures of interest to make? So, no one is indicating. So, moving on, um, item two is public participation. Um, I have no members of the public registered to speak today. Um, however, we do have um, Monica Gill and David Chafe in the room who are here from um, TACT. Um, would you like to speak when we come round to the to the business item on the question? Yes, please. Right. Yes, I think David's going to say that. Right. Thank you very much. Uh, we also have visiting councillors' representation, and I have um, councillor Caroline Horrell, um, who's asked to speak both on this item and the um, exempt appendix if required. So we'll so we'll deal we'll deal with exempt when we come to that. So moving on to the. Um, Business item on the agenda, which is um, new council housing, Dyson Drive outline business case approval, um, DD29. Uh, so I have with me in the room Deborah Sunley and Andrew Palmer to speak on this. Deborah, would you like to present, please? Thank you, Councillor Lenny. Yes, uh, today we're presenting the outline business case report for our housing development proposals that have been tried at its uh, This report seeks permission to submit a planning application the new build of eight houses and to obtain tenders to conduct the scheme and to obtain permission to dispose of and appropriate the land at Dyson Drive. These proposals comprise eight units in total, including six three bed houses, two units of two bed houses, and the two bed houses are performed with shared ownership. It's proposed to build these houses to the Passive House Standard, which is the leading international low energy design standard. The proposals support the target contained in the Housing Development Strategy, as well as supporting the Council Plan's carbon neutrality priorities. Site at Dyson Drive is located in the Abbott's Barton area and was identified as an appropriate site for affordable housing in the document, the Abbott's Barton Planning Framework. This framework identified six potential sites, including that of Dyson Drive, and was the result of a consultation in 2012 when the Council held two events with 330 local residents to identify suitable sites for housing development in the Abbott's Barton area. The resulting framework provides a comprehensive strategy for the future planning application and the development of new council homes in Abbott Barton. And the site at Dyson Drive is identified in this framework as S7. So, following the approval of the Abbott Barton planning framework, land at Hillier Way, which was also identified in the framework, was subsequently developed for 13 units of affordable housing. And this was completed at the end of 2017. The proposals for development of the land at Dyson Drive is considered as the next phase identified for development in the framework. T2 architects who are qualified and certified plastic house designers have been appointed to draw up plans for the development of affordable homes at Dyson Drive. 
local residents with consumption of proposals in July 2019, with over 200 local residents attending a consultation event which was held on the site. Some residents who attended were concerned about the lost amenity space. However, the site is not well used, chiefly because of much larger amenity space available 100 metres across the way. Positive comments and suggestions were also received around the appearance of the buildings, many favouring a traditional appearance to the proposed development. Residents' comments have been taken into account in the design process. The external consultants Green Box Associates have been appointed as green energy specialists to consider energy and design options as it, as it is proposed to design the properties for the passive house standard, which means that the properties will be highly energy efficient and thereby reducing energy demand and will result in lower energy costs for tenants. The chief risk factor identified for these proposals is that is that build costs. Passive house design is more expensive than traditional build due to the enhanced building fabric specification and energy saving heating requirements. To mitigate these additional costs, it is proposed that costs will be reviewed at key stages of the development and initial viability assessments will be undertaken to ensure that proposals meet the council criteria. And this will be reviewed at critical stages of the development process. Grunt have been appointed as our employees agent and recommend that in order to convey the majority of risk to the contractor, a design and build contract be used as the procurement method. Importantly, the report seeks approval for a deviation from the tender evaluation model of 60% cost, 40% quality, and to use a tender evaluation model of 60% quality, 40% cost. And this is to reflect the high standards required for passive house design. If this report is approved, the planning commission is approved, a final business case will be brought back to members once the final tender price is known to agree whether to proceed with the scheme. Right. Thank you very much. Uh, Mr Chafe, would you like to speak on this? Um, yes, we had a tax court meeting last week and a few items came up. Um, Following a discussion of me attending, me and Monica attending the Wither Flats consultation, and some of the same issues came up, like parking. Where was this going to happen? Where was that? And um, we tried to explain, but everything is basically done on the site and doesn't interfere with other things. We fully support the scheme and the. Emphasis on uh, rented accommodation um, on most of the property is ideal. Uh, also, that two of the units could be shared ownership and that we approved of. Um, yes, it's a good scheme. Um, it's it's going to serve a very good purpose and uh, we look forward to other schemes. In the area of generally. Thank you. Right. Thank you very much, Mr. Chain. Um, Councillor Horrell, uh, would you like to speak? Um, thank you, Chair, for allowing me to speak this morning. And um, as you can imagine, I'm happy to support a scheme uh, which delivers more um, council housing, especially as this area has been under consideration for some considerable time um, as part of the overall Abbott's Barton framework that was mentioned earlier. Um, I also support the amended quality cost recommendation to go to 60% quality, 40% cost in the tendering process. I think that's a positive. However, there are a couple of elements I was surprised not to have read in the report this morning and wondered whether we had the opportunity to have those clarified and maybe this document slightly updated as it processes through uh, council approval. Um, firstly, um, I was surprised there was no mention of the Village Green application, which had actually delayed uh, this scheme for some considerable years. I wondered if the officers could help us to understand what happened in that instance. 
Um, also, you indicate two two-bed and six three-bed houses. And I think in schemes we've been discussing recently, it's been helpful to understand the housing need, which leads to these recommendations. And you make no reference to that, although I accept this is a moving feast and obviously it changes over time. But I do think it would be helpful so that people understand why you're making that um, uh, uh, that particular con con configuration or recommendation. Um, passive house, and again, we've talked about this before, is a very good standard and we understand that, but it is expensive and there are limited people who are able to help at this point in time. I'm sure that will progress um, over the years to come. And my question is, are we looking at alternative ways to build homes that still meet our climate change targets and our aspirations that are not uh, using passive house. Is there a piece of work being undertaken, not um, linked to this project, but alongside it, to look at those alternatives? And then finally, um, I just thought it would be helpful, um, given that we are looking to use open space to build these houses, that we should articulate a little more clearly in the document um, about the framework and the open space in the broader area. As we know, there's already been a lot on the back of the Hillier Way development, and that open space discussion was a key part of the consultation that happened um, over the, the previous years. And I think just in case people are concerned that we're using open space, which is highly precious at this time, particularly after the last year or two that we've had, that uh, we clarify um, uh, the agreements and the, the space that is in that broader area, which, as you say in the document, is very close by, but I think it would be helpful to be a little more um, explicit about open space at that area. So, Chair, I hope those points are helpful. There are some slightly more broader than the Dyson Drive development, um, and um, it would be um, uh, very positive if officers could address that either this morning or at some point in the future. Thank you, Chair. Right. Um, thank you, Councillor Horrell, and thank you for your support on this. Um, obviously, this was a scheme which started um, in your time as the, as the Cabinet member. Um, and I'm really pleased to have been able to, to, to be bringing it forward today. Um, in terms of the Village Green application, I have Catherine Knight on the call. Um, Catherine, would you, like, would you like to deal with that question? I, I certainly can assist you, um, all councillors. My understanding is, and I just checked my emails, I, th I think it has actually been confirmed by Hampshire County Council, that they have accepted it, that the applicant has actually withdrawn the uh, Village Green application. So that has actually just been processed by Hampshire County Council at the moment as we speak. Thank you very much, Mr. Knight. No uh, problem. Does, does that deal with? Thank you. Right. Thank you. Uh, we then have the issue around housing need. Um, um, Mr. Palmer, would you like to do that? I'd just make some quick comments uh, about this site, and we've chosen on this site to build um, houses because it's one of the few sites that we have in our ownership which suits the provision of houses. So it was, it was primarily opportunity-led why we chose houses on this site. And obviously, house, three-bedroom houses, we can't build them on every site. So when we found this site, it, it, it suited that type of development. In terms of the specific housing need, I think Deborah's got some figures and probably yeah, at least got some comments. Yes, thank you. Um, so in terms of housing needs um, and um, what's on our Hampshire and Trade Register currently, we've got 347 applicants and currently waiting on the Hampshire and Choice Register for two and three bedroom houses. Yeah, um, I think certainly we're aware that while the, the dominant need on the housing register is for one bedroom flats, we do still need to be ensuring that we meet the broader range of housing needs and clearly when you look at the numbers um, that we're looking at we are looking at we've just uh, we're just completing um, flats that stand on, 
predominantly flat development at Stanmore. We're looking at flats in Winnell, and I think this is part of the broader piece of meeting the broad range of, of housing need. But certainly we do always think about housing need in terms of the balance, I think, of the, of the building programme, um, which is something that we need to do. Um, having attended the um, local consultation event as well, I think the provision of houses went down much better with local people. The flats would have done, coming back to some of those parking issues, for example, um, I think there was a feeling that houses would fit well into the local area. Um, I have to say, I am, I am very familiar with this site. I frequently walk and cycle through Abbott Spartan on my way to and from um, the city, my allotment and various other places. Um, and I think Councillor Horrell is right in terms of us um, as we go forward, making it clear to people which areas of green space we are keeping and how much green space there actually is in Abbott's Barton. Um, it's certainly got far, far more open space than where I live in Hairstock, which is a, a suburb which dates from around, around the same era. Um, and I think we we can be proud of actually the amount of open space we have there. But I think that is a point well taken. Um, the other issue was around passive house. Um, I know we've also been using AECB standards. Um, uh, Mr. Palmer, do you want to comment on the, the standards? Yes, Secretary Chair. Um, the first point I make is that um, yeah, Council Hall was correct. Uh, passive house is a brand, and that's what it is. Um, uh, but it's a very useful measuring tool at the moment uh, for us when evaluating. Um, how well built our stock is. So passive house we see as the main advantage is that it, it concentrates on the fabric of the building to make sure it's as airtight as possible so as little energy, heat energy is, is lost. Um, so that, that's why we use it at the moment. Um, I think moving forward the government are intending to produce some standards around low carbon and zero carbon homes. Um, and it's been new to sort of next springtime, we'll see some, some government uh, targets and government measuring uh, tools. Um, they used to have the Code for Sustainable Homes, which was really useful because in a very simplistic way, we could say to people, this was met level three or four or five. People understood what it meant. Um, it's very difficult at the moment since the withdrawal of this, uh, that uh, code um, to have um, you know, uh, effective measuring um, tools. So we look forward to receiving some more government advice on the matter in the, in the near future. But until that time, I think we'll be using Passive House and AECB as our, this is, this is the standard which produces the best uh, net zero carbon approach to building homes. Anything to add? Yeah. <laughs> No. Uh, Councillor Horrell, would you like to make any further comments on any of those points? Um, thank you, Chair, and thank you to the officers for your explanation. Um, just one point of clarification. I understand your point completely about the houses, which I think also uh, suit that environment particularly and, and that the residents will be in support. So in terms of those who will be eligible for those homes, where would they be sourced from? From the whole register, or will there be a um, uh, ward bias to that? Thank you. Thank you, Deborah. Thank you, uh, Yes, um, the um, applicants will be allocated consistent with the uh, regulations around the Hampshire Home Choice. Um, so um, the applicants will come from the Winchester District. Yeah, thank you. Right, thank you for that. Um, before I move on to having a look at the recommendations, um, we do have an exempt appendix. Um, did either uh, TACT members or Councillor Horrell uh, want to have any debate on that exempt appendix? Um, Chair, um, I don't think there's any need for that this morning. Thank you. Right. Thank you, Mr Chafe. 
No, thank you very much. Right, thank you. Um, for the benefit of those listening and watching in, uh, the exempt appendix simply contains the financial information which supports the business case. Right, um, looking at the recommendations, um, they're fairly standard um, at this point um, in development. Uh, clearly the key change is the deviation from the tender evaluation model uh, to 60%. Uh, quality, 40% cost from the normal 60% cost, 40% quality. Um, I um, have to say that our experience so far has been that actually when we're looking at these um, high quality passive house and AECB uh, developments, that we need to be very sure that those uh, building them have a really good understanding of how this works and how they can best achieve it. So certainly um, I support the 60% quality, 40% cost model um, and I'm pleased that others in the room are happy with that as well. Um, in the light of that and the other things that have been said today, um, as I said I do know the house, know the um, site well. Um, I did attend the um, the local consultation event, uh, which was broadly supportive, and I'm very happy to be moving this forward. So the recommendations are um, that the corporate head of asset management be authorised to prepare and submit a planning application to the statutory planning authority to obtain planning permission for the construction of eight properties at Dyson Drive, Abbots Barton. Two, that the corporate head of asset management be authorised to invite tenders to undertake the design and build of eight properties at Dyson Drive using a standard JCT design and build contract. Three, that the corporate head of asset management be authorised to negotiate and agree terms for easements, wage leads and related agreements with utility providers, telecom media suppliers, highways authority and neighbours and other related agreements in order to facilitate the development, subject to final decision to proceed with the scheme. Four, that authority be delegated to the corporate head of asset management to appropriate the land located within the red line on plan one in appendix one, unless objections are received, in which case a report should be brought back to cabinet with due regard to the consultation a recommendation and setting out whether any statutory compensation is payable. Five, that authority be delegated to the corporate head of asset management to dispose of the open space land located within the red line on plan one at appendix one, unless objections are received, in which case a report should be brought back to cabinet with due regard to the consultation and the recommendation. Um, we carry on. Um, six, that the consultation of the proposed disposal of the public open space land at Dyson Drive be approved in accordance with the requirements of section 123, brackets 2A of the Dublin Act 1972 as amended, and the appropriation of the land for planning purposes. Seven, that the corporate head of asset management be authorised to approve expenditure of pre construction costs up to £75,000 and that this work proceeds at financial risk to the council. Eight, that a final business case report is brought to members after tenders are evaluated and the final tender price is known to agree whether to proceed with the scheme and to award and enter into a construction design and build contract with the preferred bidder. Nine, that a deviation from the tender evaluation model within contract procedure rules, 60% cost, 40% quality, be approved to use a, a tender evaluation model giving more emphasis to quality than cost, 60% um, quality, 40% cost. Um, now I'm happy to approve all of those recommendations and I will sign this now.